From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Phoenix City Council voting right now on the future of the Suns in Arizona. Plus, dead bodies on display, why a local religious group wants to shut the exhibit down. And he's coming back. Despite retirement rumors, Fitz officially announces his return to the Arizona Cardinals. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Gabriela Becerra. And I'm Austin Britt. Thank you for joining us. The Me Too movement might be helping victims find the courage to get help. In 2018, the National Domestic Violence Hotline reported a 30% increase in calls, and Arizona is no exception. Last fiscal year, the state's Safe Domestic Violence Services Hotline answered about 28% more calls than in the previous year. Sammy Gabers reports, as more and more people reach out, beds in domestic violence shelters are consistently full. How was your day? Leslie Evans' days are devoted to taking care of her four children. Mornings are um, crazy because everybody gets up at different times. Are you going to be hunting your homework? Going to and from school hey. and helping out at her church in Phoenix. How are you? Even though life can be hectic for the single mother of four, it's filled with happiness. But it wasn't always that way. You have the right to be happy. You have the right to control your life. And because she reached out for help, <laughs> Olsen is now the one in charge of her own life. You ready to be done on the swings? No! Although maybe not of her three-year-old at times. Okay. Jeez. In Phoenix, Sammy Gebers, Cronkite News. Even though there are less domestic violence shelter beds than years before, Cindy Patterson said that community-based programs are reaching more people than ever. To learn more about the services in Maricopa County, you can call 480-890-3039. 17,492. That's the number of suspected opioid overdoses in the last year and a half here in Arizona. Many of those deaths are attributed to fentanyl, a substance that's increasingly mixed into illegal drugs. Tonight, in a Cronkite News special report, Bryce Newberry joins us live with a look at a tool advocates say can help save lives. More than 300 people have overdosed in just the last week here in Arizona. There's a growing number of advocates who believe we need to look at new ways to address the opioid epidemic. The problem is the law, at least in Arizona, because it doesn't always align with good intentions. Typically, they expect to see me at least a few times a week. But Alfred Delgado has battled addiction. I wanted to do well. I wanted to change. I just didn't know how to make that change happen. If for some reason some policeman comes to me and said, whatever you're doing is illegal, I would say, fine, take me to jail. While Maryland lawmakers may be making headway using fentanyl test strips, there's little momentum here in Arizona. The Arizona Attorney General's Office, local police, the Maricopa County Attorney's Office, not one could give us an explanation of the state's drug paraphernalia law as it relates to the test strips. A bill was introduced in the state legislature to legalize syringe service programs across the state, but it doesn't specify the legalization of these testing strips. A similar bill failed last year. Live in the studio, Bryce Newberry, Cronkite News. In Washington, meanwhile, congressional negotiators may be nearing an agreement on a budget. The proposal would fund border agencies and partly fund President Donald Trump's border wall. But depending on who you ask, the money is either not enough or way too much. As Alyssa Klink in our Washington Bureau reports, groups sharing those positions protested outside the Capitol this morning. Alyssa? The protesters I talked to at the competing rallies outside the Capitol today included several from Arizona, and negotiations on border wall funding may be winding down. Their emotions on the issue are just as strong as ever. Sunday is the first Super Bowl since a U.S. Supreme Court ruling allowing states not named Nevada to legalize sports gambling. Seven states joined the gambling mecca in allowing sports wagers inside their borders, and Arizona could enter that pool in the coming months. Taylor Rocha joins us with more and how Las Vegas is managing its first year in legal competition. Last week, Arizona Republican State Senator Sonny Borelli introduced Senate Bill 1158. 
It would allow any federally recognized tribe in the state with a tribal state gaming compact to operate a sports gambling operation. It could mean even more competition for Las Vegas, but as I learned when I went to Las Vegas last weekend, sports books are not worried about the new kids on the block. A popular vintage roadside attraction near the Grand Canyon is no longer in operation. Bedrock City, a Flintstones theme park complete with show-inspired concrete houses, a dinosaur slide, theater, restaurant, and gift shop closed this past weekend. A new owner is set to take over the 30-acre property later in the week, and they're expected to build a new theme park on the land. Dangerously cold temperatures are blanketing a large portion of the United States this week. Well, that Flintstones theme park is ancient history. Please tell me, Jordan, that the cold is too. It is very historic, <laughs> yes, Eliav. In fact, I saw on the, on that the National Weather Service, you know, to limit their speaking outside. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, that can't be right, you know. But it's actually because when we talk, we inhale all this air. And with temperatures that cold, it can actually be pretty damaging, you know, to your insides. But anyway, let's look at those temperatures that we saw. This One of the longest tenured athletes in Arizona sports history is not hanging up his cleats yet. That's right, Imani. Despite retirement rumors, Larry Fitzgerald is returning to the Cardinals in 2019. Cronkite News reporter Bailey O'Carroll joins us now with the details. Bailey? It'll be year number 16 for number 11. Cardinals wide receiver Larry Fitzgerald signed a one-year deal this morning to remain with the team. Fitz's entire career has been played with the cards, and his impact on the field has been undeniable. But he's been equally as impressive off of it with his work in the community. We talked to the receiver this past summer about the support he's gotten from fans right here in the Valley. It's been a great deal. You know, you, you just, you never take it for granted, you know, to have the support of the community and so many people that continue to turn out and, um, you know, help grow it and give your program visibility. So um, I'm very thankful, humbled, and, um, you know, I just hope I can continue to rise to the occasion. Retirement rumors have been swirling around Fitz for the past few seasons. This morning, he took to Instagram to explain why he will be making a return. He wrote, a fire burned inside of me my rookie year, a desire over all else to be great, to excel on the field, to impact the lives of others off of it. He went on to say that nothing excites him more than continuing to chase that greatness. And I think it's safe to say Cardinals cornerback Patrick Peterson is excited about Fitz's return. He couldn't believe the news and thought that Fitz was going to call it quits. Now, saving the best for last, former Cards kicker and CBS Sports' Jay Feely said, you can't get a better teammate or face of your franchise. He does everything the right way, works hard, studies diligently, never gets in trouble, and his greatest quality, he treats everyone he meets with respect, kindness, and dignity. Jay, I couldn't have said it better myself. Fitz opens his 16th season in September. Bailey O'Carroll, Cronkite News. Well, Larry's back in Arizona, but will the heat come back? I sure hope so. Jordan, what can we expect? <laughs> so the warm-up is on the way for the Valley. You know, lately it's been jackets all day, but I think we're going to start to get into a pattern of jackets in the morning and T-shirts in the afternoon. Okay. As we go outside right now, the Arizona Capitol building was under a lockdown this morning after a bomb threat. DPS officials say a suspect told officers he had a bomb in his bag when he encountered them in the Capitol Plaza. Officers arrested him and then determined there was no explosive. The area was locked down for about an hour before the all clear was given. After calling out President Trump for comments he allegedly made about late Senator John McCain earlier this week, Meghan McCain is once again speaking out, this time slamming the president's family. The political commentator and co-host of The View appeared last night on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. She talked about first daughter Ivanka Trump and her husband Jared Kushner attending her dad's funeral last year, saying he did not want anyone in the Trump family there. So I was surprised when they were there and it made me um, uncomfortable. And I hope I made them uncomfortable, honestly, with, with everything. <laughs> Ivanka Trump appeared this morning on The View, but in an interview taped Thursday at the White House with McCain's co-host, Abby Huntsman. New name, new upgrades, new perks. When Wild is now becoming Six Flags Hurricane Harbor Phoenix. Last year, the Texas-based company purchased the leasing rights to the 35-acre water attraction. Now, they plan to rebrand and bring a Caribbean-inspired marquee, marquee. Doors open March 16th for the 2019 season. 
And speaking of wet and wild, that's what we're expecting tomorrow across the state. Jordan, tell us what can we expect on Valentine's Day? Well, you might want to consider a date with your umbrella tomorrow because rain is on the way and the clouds are already here. Let's take you outside right now.